Hey everyone, Eric here for 72PC for this week's Quick Hits. To start out this week, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite party royale game, Fall Guys. This week the devs pushed an update covering a few of the uh, bigger concerns the community had around some of its game types. And probably the largest thing they did is they decided that team-based games will no longer be back-to-back. -back. Enough of y'all complained saying you don't like playing with people that you can't communicate with. So the devs have finally broken up so you can never have two team-based games in a row. For some of you, you probably like that. Personally, I really enjoyed the team game, so this is a little bit of a downer for me. Some other updates that they had, some minor stuff. Uh, for tail-based games, they're reducing the time of the game from two minutes down to a minute and a half, which is good because, let's be honest, most of us start playing those games with the last 30 seconds in mind. And then finally on this patch... Fall Mountain was updated to where it's capped at 15 player max. So no longer are we going to have an 18 person Fall Mountain where the guy starting in the third row is just screwed from the start. Some other fun news that's recently announced about Fall Guys is they're officially introducing two new skins next month. One for Portal and one for my friend Pedro. So hopefully they keep this stuff going on. We know the KFC's hinted at they want a skin. We know some NHL teams are doing it. So it'd be really fun to see some more crossovers like that come into their store, which, by the way, is already pretty badass. Next on the docket is Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, unless you've been under a rock this week, you've probably heard about this game launching, mainly because the critics are freaking loving it. It's beautiful. It uses more than two petabytes of data from satellite images to construct the 3D space underneath. It's got very, very extreme controls. Supposedly, every little knob in that cockpit is usable. Or you can just flip a switch and turn it to easy mode and let autopilot fly you wherever it is you're going. However you choose to play it, I highly recommend picking this up if you have Game Pass. Currently free. So go pick it up, check it out. That said, this game has been noted to destroy data caps. So if you have a data cap, make sure you turn off data streaming. Because this game will throw large amount of data at your network. So just make sure you know what you're doing before you wreck your entire month's allotment of data. And the last bit of news this week comes out of Rocket League, where they've announced this week that they're going to be reworking their in-game tournament mode. What they're going to be doing is every day they're going to have multiple tournaments per region that you can join. If you win a game, you advance in the tournament. If you advance in the tournament, you earn what they call tournament credits. Whenever you actually get these tournament credits, you can turn them in for cups. And then these cups you can turn in for items. It seems unnecessarily complex, but that's how you get these new items that they're going to be putting in a tournament store. So now we have a regular store, a esports store, and a tournament store. Because why not? Anyway, so as you advance in these tournaments, you will have a tournament MMR kind of system where initially it's seeded off your rank, and as you do better in tournaments, you get a higher standing in the tournaments. And the higher your standing, the better the cups you can redeem. So someone of like a GC champ area is going to get a better cup than someone in the diamond or platinum area. So they're still segmenting the stores. So in theory, you're going to have like a tiered store where some people won't have access to buy the things. So we'll see how this ultimately goes over with the community. I think overall it is a good move, but they're putting a little too much into the way they're subdividing the reward system. It could work out. I'm just a little skeptic of how they're doing it, but we'll see. And that said, they really haven't fleshed everything out with us yet. So we'll see ultimately where it ends. Um, either way, it's good to see them get in there and rework something that was a good idea, but they just didn't do anything with. Who knows, maybe next they're going to actually rework the clubs to make those meaningful. Let's hope. But also something that happened this week, this is something I'm personally excited about. Rogue Legacy 2 finally launched on Steam Early Access. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Rogue Legacy, it is a really, really fun platforming roguelike where each level is the same but different. So it's procedurally generated dungeon every time you enter it and every time you enter it you're going to be a new hero each hero have different abilities and different disadvantages sometimes stuff like colorblind or just something silly other times they can't jump or something like that it's it's always something different and unique it's fun 
this is one of the few times I'll look in early access game and not be concerned just because Rogue Legacy, the first one, was just so, so well done. And I don't doubt they're going to do a good job with this one. And the last thing I'm going to leave with you all this week is what I'm considering the deal of the week. Currently, NBA 2K20 is 94% off, being sold at roughly $5 right now. This is the current NBA game out there. And while the creative player and franchise modes are heavily monetized, which is kind of bullshit, but just ignore that, at the base of just playing a basketball game that you can have another friend at the other side of the country and just play against each other five on five, it's still a really fun game. So I recommend picking that up at $5 if you like traditional basketball games. If not, eh, oh well, nothing for you this week. But that said, that's all I got for you tonight. So until next week, game on.